the Sussy Doctor's regeneration was going strong. He lay on the floor of the TARDIS console room as the blue box drifted away from the Earth. After a good five minutes of crying time for the fans, the swirling multicolored energy retracted and in his place was a completely new man. Paul the Cibberman, his companion who had been standing next to the sassy doctor as he had regenerated, looked at the new person lying in the Time Lord's clothes and scanned his features with his cyber eyes. He knew that this new person was the doctor, unconscious after his regeneration. His cheekbones were better than before, but his hair had become messy and manic which he would need to fix. Suddenly, the new doctor's eyes sprung open and the Time Lord took a big overdramatic breath, sucking in all the lovely cool air of the TARDIS before sitting up. He looked around and then at Paul and licked his lips before shaking his head about. Sorry, forgot my manners. How do you do? Care for a cream egg? Oh look! Hands! The newly regenerated doctor smiled as he gazed at his new hands before falling unconscious. Paul smacked his cyber forehead and rubbed his cyber chin. This is gonna be a tricky one, he thought to himself as loud Murray Gold cliffhanger music blared in his cyber ears. cyber feet. Paul laid the doctor on a sick bed and then walked over to a cabinet where they kept all the medical equipment. The doctor's eyes flickered open and he looked at where he was, lying on a bed. While Paul contemplated on which relaxant was better for a time lord, the doctor quietly crept out of the room and into the endless corridors of the time machine. Now, doctor. Paul said, not knowing that he was talking to himself. Let's see if I can wake you up. He turned around and realized the doctor was gone. He had disappeared, gone with the wind, faded from all of time and space, not even a trace of him ever being there. Suddenly, the sound of the sick bay door clicking shut answered his question. He had woken up and wandered out. Paul pushed open the exit and looked down the three-way corridor junction. No sign of the doctor. Paul guessed that he might have gone back to the console room and started to dash back the way they had come. Unfortunately for Paul, the doctor had not returned to the console room and was instead going in the complete opposite direction. He didn't know where he was going. Just away from the medical bay, the Time Lord had no clue of who he was. For some reason his post-regenerative trauma had manifested itself as amnesia. He couldn't remember anything, only that he had woken up in a room and then woke up again in another room. Nothing made sense, not him, not the Metal Man, not the TARDIS, not anything. It was just like after you'd had a bit too much alcohol and you wake up in on a plane, and you're in Portugal. The doctor tripped and landed on his front. Today really wasn't his day. Something fell out of his pocket and rolled right in front of him. It was a metal stick, and it seemed familiar. Engraved in it were the words the doctors. Hands off. Who's the doctor? Thought the doctor. And why does this metal stick ring a bell? Speaking of bells, the cloister bell began to ring out across the TARDIS as Paul reached the console room. No sign of the doctor, but that wasn't important right now. The Cyberman flicked on the scanner to analyze the problem. As the rattle on the wall activated, Paul saw something that he couldn't believe. A massive, giant, even enormous Cadbury's chocolate bar was slowly heading towards the TARDIS. Paul grabbed the controls and tried to make the TARDIS to materialize but it was no use. The massive, giant, even enormous Cadbury's chocolate bar smashed into the side of the ship and the blue box fell into the hollow interior of the bar while the cyber companion was sent tumbling around the console room. The same was happening to the confused doctor. This really wasn't helping his recovery. The ship crashed into the control room of the massive, giant, even enormous Cadbury's chocolate bar where its pilots waited outside, giggling evilly. Paul stood up and looked at the scanner, which was broken. It seemed he was going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Paul was a bit cautious as he had a feeling that he'd step outside and be shot by gang members. Now that can be really annoying. 
The Cinnamon clicked open the double doors and hopped down onto the chocolate surface. Welcome, traveler. Blur a voice that sounded like it had been created in the radiophonic workshop hissed from in front of Paul and the cyber companion watched as three man-sized Cadbury creme eggs wandered out from the shadows. This is a most unpleasant surprise. Back inside the TARDIS, the doctor slumped himself against a wall and closed his eyes. Why could he not remember anything? It really, really bothered him. He was so bothered by it, he just wanted to curl up into a little ball and do nothing. But he didn't do that. There was still a good 10 minutes of episode time left. The Time Lord began to rummage through his pockets, to see if he could recognize anything. Suddenly, he pulled out a photo. It was in black and white but the image was clear. It was a picture of four men with funny haircuts and holding instruments standing with two other people. They were the metal man he had seen earlier, and another man who he seemed to recognize but just couldn't remember why. He was in the same clothes as he was and was wearing cool shades. They all looked like they were having great fun. On the back of the photo, written in pen was Paul, me and the Beatles at Christmas in 1967. Paul. Paul! The doctor started to finally remember. He remembered Paul, his best friend who had got turned into a Cyberman all those years ago. From one memory came another, and another, until suddenly the doctor remembered who he was. I. Am. The. Doctor! After he shouted, standing up and looking very handsome and dramatic. He ran down the corridors until he reached the wardrobe and slammed the door behind him. Paul shook around as he was tied up and hanging above a pit that led into the endless void that was space. The creme eggs watched as the Cyberman wriggled about, trying to break free. Do not struggle, or you shall die. Now tell us, why did you come here? The lead creme eggs screeched. I told you, we didn't come here by choice. You crashed into us. Paul shouted down. There are more of you. Where? Another egg wobbled. Scared. He'll be coming soon. And you what won't stand a chance against him. He will tell us who is coming. The third egg fell over from all the wobbling. Me! Me. Boomed from inside the TARDIS, as a dramatic camera angle zoomed in on the ship's doors as they swung open and the Doctor, in a purple jacket, turquoise shirt, dark blue waistcoat, purple trousers and purple top hat, stepped out into the room. I believe this is the point in the episode where you let my friend go and I defeat you. Who are you? The lead egg asked, overcome by the doctor's dramaticness. I've already said who I am in a previous scene. If you weren't watching, tough luck. What are you talking about? Nothing really. Now. The doctor whipped out his brand new sonic screwdriver he had just got the TARDIS to make and whirled it at the ropes which held Paul. They snapped and the Cyberman began falling down towards the pit incredibly slowly so the Doctor had time to use his sonic screwdriver to activate the pit's metal cap to slam over the hole into space. Paul gracefully landed on his feet. Thanks for saving me, Doctor. Paul waved to his friend from across the room. No problem, Paul. See, I've remembered who you are! The Doctor smiled, pleased with himself. I can see. This conversation is irrelevant. The lead egg growled dangerously wobbling in front of the doctor. No, it's not. Now, this is as far as I had thought up to in my plan. I guess they would have come up with something now. The Time Lord pulled on his collar, sheepishly. Doctor! Paul shouted. Toss me your sonic screwdriver. Okay. The doctor threw his sonic device over the creme eggs and into Paul's hands. Now what? How does this new one work? You point and think. Right then. The Cyberman grinned under his cyber helmet and activated the sonic screwdriver at a chocolate control panel. Suddenly, the entire ship began to shake and tremble with power. What is happening? Screeched the eggs. Yeah, what is happening, Paul? The doctor questioned. I sabotaged the ship to shrink until it's the size of a normal chocolate bar. How did you know the sonic screwdriver could do that? I didn't. Paul shrugged his shoulders and the doctor chuckled to himself. Making up the plan as you go along. That can be very dangerous, you know. The doctor waggled a finger. You do it all the time. Exactly. Suddenly, they began to feel the effects of the shrinking ship as the walls and roof moved inwards. The creme eggs had fallen over and were rolling around the room. 
nauseously. Come on, Paul, back to the TARDIS. The two dashed back into the TARDIS and the ship Demity realized just before the massive, giant, even enormous shrunk to the size of a normal Cadbury's chocolate bar. The TARDIS hovered around the chocolate before its double doors opened and a hand zipped out, grabbing the tiny spaceship. The doctor closed the doors before taking a big bite of the chocolate bar. Wow, this is really good! The Time Lord dropped the bar into his jacket pocket before he clapped his hands enthusiastically. Now, down to business. I'm thinking, hmm, the Eye of Oreo. Doctor? Paul asked. Yes, Paul? I want to go home. The Sibman said, softly, and the Doctor froze. This sudden confession had taken him by surprise. Oh. You mean, Earth home? In Essex? Yeah, I mean, it's not that I'm sick of traveling. I'm going to miss it so much. But it's that I've already traveled with two of you, and I think you need a break from me. I... I suppose you're right. Maybe this is what I need. New me, new life. Me too. Well then, let's get you home. The saddened doctor reluctantly started working the controls of the TARDIS before landing her at Paul's house in Britain. Paul pulled open the doors and walked onto the uncut grass of his front garden. He turned around and looked at the doctor standing in the doorway. Don't go. The doctor mouthed before he accidentally leant back on the door controls and fell onto the console. He tried to get up, but his jacket caught on the demit levers and the ship dematerialized. Paul took a step back as the TARDIS faded away, wind gushing around before it completely vanished and the breeze settled. Tears of oil bubbled in his cyber eyes and rolled down his cyber cheeks. Goodbye. Paul muttered to himself.